Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Help for the Guild List. My name, of course, is Antoine. I love lists, don't you? You know, little organizational tools that help you get through your everyday life. You can have a list of favorite movies. You can have a list of things to do during the day. You can have a list of organizational topics for IKEA that help you put together something that falls apart an hour later. The problem with certain lists is they get kind of stupid. And that's where we are today, with 10 examples of straight privilege. This is brought to us by Everyday Feminism. Because of course it is. It would have been Everyday Feminism or BuzzFeed. So let's jump right into it, shall we? The stupidity doesn't stop at one. It goes all the way to 10. This is from Aaron Tatum, who I'm pretty sure wishes they were Channing Tatum. And apparently this article has been translated into Polish, so Polacks everywhere can cringe as well. So in spite of increasing acceptance and support for queer people, we live in a society that affords heterosexual individuals more rights, power, and freedom. You know, they're not going to tell you how at all in this article. They're just going to bitch and complain. But that's what makes it fun, because then I can tear it apart and alleviate some of the stress in my life. And to make you folks at home laugh as well. Straight people might not consciously think about or acknowledge it, but straight privilege influences everything from their daily lives to their career goals. Because this invisible wall stops everyone else that's on the LGBTQPRSY21 spectrum. As a result, straight narratives vastly differ from queer ones. Let's break down some of the ways that straight privilege comes into play. You know, I actually have a stake in this. I'm actually bisexual, so this, this whole straight privilege thing is something that I should be able to hold against people, I would think. I'm going to see if I can pick up any pointers. Number one. Your orientation is naturalized from birth. One day, while I was shopping, I was simultaneously repulsed and amused to find baby onesies that said things like ladies man and lock up your daughters. Putting aside the obvious gross misogyny, I couldn't believe how early people jump at the chance to shoehorn their children into heterosexual narratives. A similar phenomenon occurs whenever baby boys smile at me in the grocery store. Their mothers will say something like, look at how he's flirting with you. Ma'am, your son barely has grasp on object permanence, so I doubt he knows what a girl is. Heteronormativity is established before kids are even out of diapers. Although it's annoying and borderline creepy, it gives straight people an easy template for romance. When a boy has a crush on a girl or vice versa, they don't have to question why they like that person or larger implications of liking that person. Their attraction to another gender is already anticipated and expected. This isn't a problem. Do you want to know why? The majority of the people in this country and in the world are heterosexual. That's why it's normalized, because it is the norm. It is the generalization of the entirety of the human species that we are heterosexual in order to procreate and continue the species. Number two, you don't have to come out. Building off of number one, you don't have to announce your heterosexuality to the world. Very few parents are going to be surprised or angry that their child is straight. People that you're sexually compatible with are still going to be readily available without having to confirm that you are both straight. And if you're thinking queer people only have to come out once, it's just a matter of gathering up the courage and ripping off the band-aid, you're wrong. Queer people have to come out over and over again throughout their lives. Next time you go to Thanksgiving dinner or score a date and or make a friend, be grateful you don't have to discuss and defend your sexual identity. How about you grow some balls? If you're uncomfortable with coming out, make sure the person that you are coming out with is okay with you. It may not be a choice that you are this way, but believe it or not, aside from what everyday feminism is trying to push, most people are actually pretty okay with you being a different sexuality than them. It's really not that big of an issue. You're making it that big of an issue. Stop it. Number three. You don't have to justify your identity or the legitimacy of your orientation. No one is going to insist that heterosexuality is just a phase. You won't be asked to prove your straightness by rattling off your romantic or sexual history or trace it back to a particular moment in your childhood. You won't be told to pick a side. Heterosexuality is already legitimate in that it's backed by centuries of socio-cultural dominance and political laws. You can move through the world with your orientation and lifestyle 
unquestioned. Here, here's a here's a really quick, really easy way to stop that from being an issue. Are you ready? Don't fucking care. If someone you are talking to is amazed that you're a lesbian and then decides to go, oh, how many girls have you slept with? Either he's trying to be coy, flirty, or he's an asshole. You don't have to justify it to him. You don't have to give us your sexual history or trace it back to a particular moment in your childhood. And you don't have to pick a side. The sooner you realize all of this, the easier your life will become. Number four, your right to get married is never questioned. And it won't be questioned anymore because, you know, 30 states allow you to get married to same-sex couples. The other 20 will eventually follow. You cannot be fired for your job because of your sexual orientation. Guess what? You can't be fired for your sexual orientation now! Stop bullshitting yourself into saying that the, you can be discriminated against. It's against federal law. You don't have to fear violence because of your orientation. Well, actually you do. Because drag queens are very catty. I've known gay people that hate straight people. Everyone has to fear violence because of their orientation. Now, yes, I will admit that homosexuals in, oh, I don't know, Texas may have a little bit of a difficulty in the outlying cities. But again, moreover, in this country, people are accepting of it. There is always an exception to the rule. It is still an exception, not the rule. Number seven. You don't have to worry about losing your family, friends, or financial support as a result of revealing your sexuality. Sometimes, when a queer person decides to come out, they risk disappointing their parents or losing a friend. In more extreme cases, parents will stop paying their child's college tuition or kick them out of the house. In fact, 40% of homeless youth are queer and trans kids. Sure, sexuality can create some messy situations no matter who you like, but straight kids probably aren't going to lose the roof over their head if they get caught with their significant other. If their significant other happens to be related to them, I'm pretty sure that's still going to be the situation. Now, okay, I will admit that yes, this does happen and it is horrible, but do you want to know what happens when these kids blast their parents on social media? Their parents get railroaded and they get an outcrying of support from random people, even sometimes going as so far as to raising thousands of dollars for them to find a home. It sucks that you are different than most people. But if you don't get over it now, stiff up a lip and all, it's only going to get worse. There are places that you can contact. There are shelters that you can go to. There are helplines that you can call. There are psychiatrists that are able to deal with this and help you through your problems. If you choose not to take any of those, that's your choice. And as for the parents stopping paying their child's college tuition, there's an easy solution to that too. Apply for grants and loans and grow the fuck up. Number eight, you have ample and fairly accurate media representation. <laughs> I love this. I'm a father. My accurate representation is King of Queens or the guy who beats his wife on Law & Order SVU. So I get to either be a bumbling idiot or an abusive asshole. Where's my equal representation? You see, the men of TV have stopped being role models. Now it's all about the woman. I'm not going to get into that. I don't have a problem with that. I have a problem with my representation as well. Everyone does, but I don't take them as an example of who I am. I look at King of Queens and I laugh. I look at SVU and go, that dude's an asshole. I don't see it as representation of myself because I don't need to be represented by these people. And that's what a lot of the problems are with this situation. You don't have an accurate media representation. Big fucking deal. I don't see a lot of nerds out there getting all of the love. Go home, gamer girl. The best we have is Bill Gates and he's still a nerd. This is a moot point. 
This is just bitching, first world problems and all. I'm pretty sure the people who are in India who are starving in the street while they're taking a shit don't have a problem with them not having representation in the media. You can talk about your partner and your love life without worrying about accidentally outing yourself. There's another really easy way of doing this. Don't care. Don't care that they're gonna look at you funny. Because if you're constantly worrying about your co-workers, or I don't know if you're talking to a stranger on the bus, if you're constantly worried about how they're gonna look at you when you decide to tell them, hey, me and my girlfriend scissored the other night and I had the biggest orgasm of my life, you're going to have a problem. You need to be more confident in yourself. You see, that's where the problem is. It's about you. It's not about your partner. It's not about what you did. It's not about the dirty deeds that you've done in your bedroom. It's about your confidence in being able to say what you want to say. And finally, number 10. You have the opportunity to learn about your privilege rather than experiencing oppression firsthand. It is important to understand and recognize straight privilege in order to better ally yourself with the LGBTQIA plus two soul bullshit community and to help create a future where the intrusions that perpetuate such privilege and oppression no longer have an influence. Use your position of power to amplify the voices of those who might otherwise not be heard. This one can be summed up very simply. Don't be an asshole. It's that simple. Don't be an asshole. All of this can be simplified into don't be an asshole. There's no such thing as straight privilege. There's no such thing as white privilege because you're saying that someone has a better opportunity in this country than someone else does. And that's just patently untrue. You see, you want, like the rest of the leftists want, equal outcome, not equal opportunity. You don't want to have to deal with your choices and you don't want to have to deal with the repercussions of said choices. Now, I'm not saying that you choose to be part of LGBTQ community, but how you handle yourself and how you deal with yourself and your sexuality on a daily basis is up to you and how confident you can be if you are really worried about all of the interactions you're ever going to have for the rest of your life, you might as well lock yourself up in a room and hide away because it's not going to get any better. And those are my thoughts, folks. I'd love to know yours. Let me know in the comments. If you like what I do here, please hit like, share, and subscribe. And if you do subscribe, hit that little bell icon so you know when I upload. If you'd like more of me, you can always join me every Tuesday at 4 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time, where you can join Brockus, Zell, Lo-Fi, and myself for Proper Villains Live. Or you can always join me on my Discord. The links are down below. If you'd like to support the channel, I have links below for Patreon, Maker Support, and a link to PayPal for one-time donations. There's also a link to a very awesome merch store. But with that being said, this has been Help for the Guildless. My name, of course, is Antoine, and I hope you have a wonderful evening. Shit.